On the breakfast, what seems like a joke has become a reality as Nigerians complain as fuel scarcity bites hard. It is just two days to the APC primaries in Ocean State and the Ralph Arebeshola group and the Goyega Oyetola group are battling for who would own the party in the state. We'll be looking at the national dailies as usual and the top trending stories right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a bumper package ahead. Very good morning to you. Welcome to the Plus uh, to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's an interesting day and uh, lots to talk about right here on the breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels, alongside Messi Ebopo. We'll be taking you through the discussions, uh, starting with the top trending stories. Uh, of course, uh, we have a new super analysis and two very important subjects that we'll be discussing with our guest analysts on the program today. You're very welcome. Let's uh, start to things with um, a look at the top trending stories around Nigeria. Um, a lot of lots of issues generating reactions, and we bring those issues of, of the social media and of the mainstream media to you right here, um, looking at the different sides and also taking uh, a, a pause or checking the pause of what the people are saying. Uh, one that uh, got a lot of people talking was um, Lassa fever infecting 358 people and uh, said to have killed 59 uh, persons across 19 states of the Federation. This coming from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. We've been used to the NCDC um, giving us statistics and figures of uh, COVID-19 infections uh, in the, the country. But the NCDC is more than just that. And whilst they've been giving Nigerians the, uh, the figures of infections and even deaths from COVID-19, we've had also them doing their work for other infectious diseases as well. Uh, 59 lives claimed since the beginning of 2022. Um, is it's it's um, really really worrying a worrying statistic and uh, the NCDC is putting this information out so that people can be aware of Lassa fever and so that people can also take steps to protect themselves. Uh, this this disease has been on over the years in the country. Um, it's a deadly disease. It's gotten from the rat, and um, a lot needs to be done to wipe. Lassa fever out of Nigeria. Well, a situation report was released on Wednesday by the center, uh, once again saying 358 persons had been infected with uh, 59 confirmed deaths. This is in across 19 states, as we, as we said, but also 65 local government areas of the country. Uh, the report said that new health, uh, seven new healthcare workers had been infected in Bauchi and Edo state. So uh, we can see that the impact on this um, is not just on the the public, but also on those who are taking care of the infected people, being the health care workers. And um, we certainly do hope that uh, more will be done to protect the health care workers. Um, uh, we have uh, some new health care workers infected in Bauchi, Undo, and Edo states. Uh, I need to correct that. But it was also re revealed by the NCDC that uh, in the sixth week of the year, uh, the number of new confirmed cases increased from 58 in week five. Um, and to uh, in week five, 2022, to 77 cases. You know that's what they're saying. Uh, it's really, really worrying. And um, the the NCDC is saying that the national Lassa fever multi-partner and multi-sectoral national emergency coordination center has been activated uh, to coordinate response activities at all costs. So this to them now is a national emergency. This to them. Uh, it's not an emotional emergency, and uh, I think all of us need to treat it as such. Um, if we have 59 lives being claimed since the beginning of the year, that's really worrying. Um, so if the NCDC is now activating its emergency response mechanisms across the Federation, it means the rest of us need to take it seriously. And uh, one of the issues that uh, have been adduced or has been adduced um, as being responsible for this Lassa fever and the infestation of rats is sanitation. So we need to take, make sure that our environments are kept clean, and uh, uh, sanitized. That's very important. Now, this is another bizarre word. Um, it sent a lot of set a lot of tongues wagging yesterday. A um, uh, uh, street beggar in Abuja being found with uh, cash. That's um, five hundred thousand naira cash. That's 
0.5 million naira. Uh, we need to correct that 0.5 million naira, 500,000 naira cash, and uh, 100 US dollars as well. All right, 100 US dollars. So that 100 US dollars translates to about 57,000 naira. So that could be said to be a total of uh, 557,000 naira. You can see the money right there. Um, she's from Kaduna State. Her name is Hadiza Ibrahim. And uh, she has been begging on the streets of uh, Wuse and Meitama in Abuja for the past 10 years. Um, the information was revealed by uh, the Director of Social Welfare Services at the Social Development Secretariat, the Social Development Secretariat of the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Khadiza Ibrahim is 48 years old. She hails from Kaduna State, um, and she's been begging on the streets of uh, uh, Abuja for the past 10 years. But I do not know why a picture of her was taken, and, you know, she, she was told to hold up the money and all that. I don't know what the what issue is, because... Um, We've checked the polls of Nigerians, reactions of Nigerians across uh, social media, and um, some are saying, you know, the money is hers. You know, she had, had worked, had hustled for the money, begged, and then why should she be arrested? You know, but the, uh, the director of the social welfare services at that sector, at, uh, Malam Sani Amar, is saying that she wasn't arrested because of the money. They never knew she had such an amount of money on her, uh, but when... They arrested, they, they, they picked her up, and I, I'm not comfortable with the word arrest, but when they picked the Hadiza Ibrahim up, uh, they saw that, they discovered that she had that amount of money. Uh, and what they're saying is, because the way the papers are put it, they may not give the, 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 right, the right picture. It's not as that they are arresting her, but they are trying to probably, you know, clear the beggars of the streets, and uh, they do this from time to time. And what the, the gentleman head of that agency is saying that, is that when the operatives and the staff of that agency pick up the beggars from the streets to try and maybe get them back to where they came from and um, they have to search them so that they will be sure there's nothing on them uh, to harm themselves or the staff of the agency and that's what they did um some have expressed surprise uh, uh, that uh, a street beggar can have such an amount of money on them while some have said hey it's nothing surprising because um, she has been begging over 10 years or about a decade you know on that in that part of abuja which is an affluential neighborhood you look at wuse too look at meitama you have rich people living there um it's not a surprise that people will be really benevolent to her to help her the agency here is saying that she's she doesn't have any mental issues she's able to you know decipher between right and wrong she's able to find her way around um, but she just has to, uh, social what it calls a social um uh, issues you know she has to adjust be readjusted socially and uh that's what they're saying they're trying to help her he said the money is saved they are not going to touch the money but they try to readjust her socially so that she can understand that she doesn't need to beg and that she can use the money that she gets uh, from the begging to start a business for herself what she says is she goes back to her village each time she makes up to the, uh, get some money and when the money is finished in the village she comes back to abuja so that's a quite a, a bizarre one there um but hey all we can do is we can you have to keep on being a brother's keeper and we'll leave the rest to god uh, that's another bizarre one i think a couple of days ago on this segment right here on the breakfast we took a trending story uh, not necessarily a trending story because it's been it's been on for some years but it was something that got people talking uh, um in bolivia where the head of the the union the workers union there set himself ablaze well very sad scenes coming in a Jau estate area of Nigeria, some call it mild drama, but a, a driver, a commercial, a driver, a commercial driver, bus driver, uh, set himself ablaze uh, on fire to prevent himself from uh, being arrested by officials of the Lagos State uh, Traffic Management Agency, LASMA. You know, they wanted to impound his vehicle and um, uh, he was arrested for allegedly violating state traffic rules. Um, now, those who were there, the eyewitnesses said that while the driver was trying to see how he could remedy the situation by uh, begging the traffic officers, one of them forcibly took over the steering wheel from him. And, uh, you know, the driver, noticing what was about to happen to him, um, uh, grabbed a jerry can filled with petrol that was in the bus and emptied the content on himself. And he was said to have brought out a lighter from his pocket and set himself ablaze. This is... Uh, uh, really sad. Now, the witnesses also say they heard the driver, uh, you know, saying it was better to die than to live and watch his only means of livelihood taken from him. Um, on seeing what was happening to their colleagues, other drivers around there who were sympathetic to that, that guy, uh, conversion started pelting the last more officials with stones. 
Now, soon, the drivers will be joined by what we call Agbero or area boys. These are street urchins uh, to attack the, the last more officials. And uh, it was a, quite a scene there. They tried to put the, the, the fire out, you know, and, or the burning man. And uh, unfortunately, the damage done on him was, on him was colossal. Uh, they had to rush him to a hospital. And uh, we hear that um, uh, as of press time, you know, the last more officials could not respond. Um, to the inquiries. Really bizarre, really sad one uh, affecting that gentleman there. But it simply shows the extent uh, to which the situation of harassment of drivers, even although they're breaking the traffic rules, has got into in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria. The government needs to do something about that. Finally, uh, this is a, a touching story. Uh, it's one of the stories that um, uh, can, will touch the core of your heart, really. Um, it happened somewhere in, uh, in Port Harcourt River State, in a part of Port Harcourt called uh, Rumi Igbo. I know Rumi Igbo quite well uh, because I've, I've stayed in Port Harcourt for some years. Um, this is uh, uh, an alumni of the University of Jos who found his mate, his mate, his, um, his mate from the university, mentally unstable. It's, 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 it's touching, really. So some alumni of the University of Jos uh, located their mate, Hilary uh, Mina Bellem, who became mentally unstable on the eve of his master's degree defense. Hilary Mina Bellem became mentally unstable on the eve of his master's degree defense. Uh, the alumni have since taken him to the psychiatric hospital, which is still at that uh, room, Igbo, interestingly enough. Um, so it, it's, it's quite, uh, quite touching, really sad. And uh, he's expected to recover as he follows the doctor's directions. Um, this was shared on Instagram. Um, you can see him there. They had to take the clothes off him and, uh, you know, take him to the hospital. Um, it's touching, but this shows uh, how humane, you know, human beings can get. For the alumnus uh, uh, of this school going all the way, look at the, him, him hugging his, uh, his student, his mate there, going all the way to look for him and to help him. I uh, think this is an example that everyone should emulate, an example that everyone should emulate. It's really touching, really touching indeed. And it brings uh, tears to the eyes of, of many, you know. It's a teary story. Um, hopefully, we pray, we hope that uh, um, Hillary will, will recover from the situation and will get better. You know, and uh, the comments by Nigerians, you know, on social media, not just Nigerians, but from all around the world. Um, one person said, this made tears to drop from my eyes. Humanity at its finest. I pray he recovers and does well in life. Kudos and big respect to his fellow alumnus uh, who took out their time uh, to check up on him and make sure that they could take care of him. Um, uh, you know, another person, some of have been, you know, throwing stones at government online, saying what the government doesn't and cannot do for its citizens. You know, this is what uh, citizens are having to do for themselves. And uh, it's really touching, really touching. Wow. You can't have enough of such feel-good stories in a time, in a nation where such stories are uh, hard to come by. Uh, good to see. It's still the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Ezekiel Nyeitok is a public affairs analyst. He'll be joining us as we look at the stories from the pages of the National Dailies up next on The Breakfast. Stay with us.